We're looking at a really unique M4 alternative in this episode of the Gear Guide. You know, Real Sword is known for making some really cool and interesting guns, and they love the Russian and Chinese military guns, and this one is no exception. This is the Chinese PLA's Type 97. So what's neat about the Type 97 is it takes standard US GI mags, and of course the Airsoft one is no exception. Now, I've never seen a real Type 97 in person, obviously, so I only have photos on the internet to go off of, but doing a lot of close-in looking and research, this thing is right on the money. So let's kind of run down the gun since this one's new to you guys, and then we'll get into the chrono. So opening the box and getting the gun out, I really do like what Real Sword does. They give you a sheet that actually shows the chrono readings and all the testing, and it's also written in Chinese as well as English. I think it's a really fantastic touch. Also, they include a little oil. It's empty, but uh, the oil thing you would really get with a real AK or real Type 97 in the Chinese military as well as some other stuff in there. I just love all those unique touches that add just to that extra level of realism when making an investment in a Type 97. So the Type 97 is made of two materials. You have polymer and you have metal, and there's a mix of steel and aluminum in this build. Now, starting at the front, metal barrel, metal flash hiders, painted orange, so if you guys uh, live in a place where you can take the orange off, you just have to paint that, no big deal. Um, polymer body, for the most part, if you look at here, the top, the rails, uh, most of this up here in the back is all polymer, including the grip, and then of course, underneath everything down here, the lower receiver from here to here, is metal as well, and it is a solid block. There is a ton of mass in the back of this gun. You pick it up, you're like, God, this thing's kind of heavy, but the second you shoulder it, it is really light because all that weight is back here in your shoulder. There's very little up here. It makes it really easy to maneuver and use. And I'm gonna tell you, this thing being a really long barrel, I mean, you're looking at a barrel that goes from here all the way like at the bottom of your screen, all the way up to here. So you're looking at way longer than an M4 barrel, but you get this really short, compact package. I mean, it only barely goes out, didn't even go to arm's length, so you can still clear rooms, you can do close quarter battle, but you have that barrel length to get those long shots off. On the top, you got the charging handle, which opens the dust cover for the adjustable hop up. It's right here behind it. And then metal sight here on the front that is adjustable left to right for windage. On the back, you've got this peep sight that rotates and continuously rotates over. So you just click it and it goes to the next one. It goes 100 meters, 300 meters, 500 meters, and then a little post. Now, obviously in airsoft, that's way beyond the ranges, but you can adjust it to the little aperture, the, the size hole you're looking for, or if you want to line that post up. Now, one thing I did notice is that the, the sight picture, I guess you're so close when you get down on this, it really is a bit of a challenge to get and look through here, but no worries, they give you a scope rail mount and you can mount real accessories right on here that fit the real Type 97. Since it's a bullpup, you know you do have the trigger up here which has linkage that goes back, mech box lives here in the back, and teardown's really simple, real actually surprisingly simple. You have a pin here in the back, you pop it, this whole back cover comes off, lets you access the mech box, and it does have a quick change spring system, well, relatively quick, you can access it uh, rather fast with the Phillips head screwdriver. And then one pin here on the body here in the front, you pop this out and the entire front lower polymer comes off. Now there's really nothing there you'd access except for the trigger. So if you have a trigger issue, also the wiring that goes to the battery. And that's something that is kind of a little bit unique on this gun. And I wish they made a change, but I'm glad they let you get to it because the battery lives here in the grip and the grip is not big. Even those little tiny buffer tube batteries will fit in there, but you're not gonna be able to get the cover back on the grip and the wires are gonna hang out. Now that's easily fixed because the fuse is up underneath here and with a quick pop here, you can pull this whole assembly off. Now you have this entire space up here from all the way almost up to the end of the barrel back to the grip or even a little past the grip to hide your battery in there. So fear not, if you guys want something bigger, you can get it in there, but just keep in mind, it's gonna take a little bit of work to make that change if you need to on the battlefield. And last but not least is fire selector and controls here on the back. You've got the fire selectors kind of back here on the stock. And you've got to say for safe, semi, and A for auto, and you just kind of just flip it to the, the mode you're looking for and make it happen. Also, the mag release is back here on the right-hand side. Now, it's just kind of a metal post. I'll be honest, it's a little sharp. I would maybe like kind of put some rubberized coating on this thing to get to it, and it is a little unique. You kind of got to reach back here and, and kind of do this weird thing to get the mag out. Also, of note, the mag well does accept standard M4 mags, but some are an interesting fit. This is a little tighter than most. You're gonna have to kind of test and play to find out what works with this gun. But you know, with any unique gun, you're gonna deal with an issue like that. 
Taking it out to the Chrono, we saw incredible FPS. I and mean, this thing was like 410, 415 with a 0.2 gram BB. I mean, this thing was really hot, man. It was moving. And I think that spring is gonna settle back down a bit. It might be a bit over for your field, but if you're not, remember, it does have that quick change spring system. So you can get in there, pop the back off and bring that spring down, no problem. Also, rate of fire wasn't too shabby at all in the 16s, 16 and a half on an 11120C LiPo. So you're gonna have enough rate of fire to get rounds down range and accuracy again was on par with any gun with this barrel length i didn't see any issues at all whatsoever hitting what i was aiming at within the engagement distances so guys, if you want something to really stand out in the battlefield, you're tired of the M4s, or you just want to go with like that People's Liberation Army loadout, take a look at the Type 97. You can pick this thing up at Airsplat for right around $439. They also have a bunch of the parts, since the mech box is a bit unique and things like that, they actually sell the service parts for it too, so fear not. And guys, I have to say, I was very impressed with this gun. So I gotta know, what do you guys think? I know there's always that, oh, not another M4, not another M4. Well, this is not another M4, but what do you think of it? Since it does take the M4 mags, it's super unique. Uh, a little weird looking, I've heard some people say, eh, it kind of looks kind of funky, but I think it kind of looks cool. It's like somebody took an M16 from back in the Vietnam era and just like put it in Photoshop and twisted it and crunched it and did all kinds of crazy stuff to turn it into what it is now. But I have to admit, the balance on this gun's really nice. But enough about what I think, I wanna know what you guys think of the Type 97. Let me know in the comment section below. Well guys, that's it for this episode of the Gear Guide. I'll be back in the next one when I do a People's Liberation Army slingshot loadout where I run around with nothing but a stick, a rubber band, and BBs and take care of my opponents.